Hello and welcome to the Decibel Boost Podcast, the official music podcast for the website's Surreal Resolution. I'm your host and intergalactic criminal, Robert C137, and with me, I have... Captain Spectacular himself, Alex. And... And I am Surreal Resolution's Boost Staples, aka Mark. I did not hear a word of that, but I'm sure it'll make sense in the reporting eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, Basically, you're building your eye on future to me. Ah, is that the wrong? Sounds like you're. It sounds like you're cupping the mic. Yeah, and, and and if we all know, if there's one thing you're not supposed to do, it's cup the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Alex has a T-shirt for that. Soon, oh. I, I will soon. Uh, only soon. Yeah, only soon. So, since we're actually recording this, guess what that means? I survived Matthew. Yay! Which apparently did not do much damage to my neck of the woods. I don't even think it rained that night. Like, all this prep, like, down here, and, like, we were just kind of, okay, we're, we're just chilling out here. And I was like, well, I mean, it did have some effect. Like, I guess it must have hit, like, some, probably the Comcast servers in the area, because, like, the internet was fucking wonky as shit on Friday, so when I finally got the podcast last week finished, I, I couldn't upload it at home because the freaking signal was breaking up too much, I had to go down to a goddamn Starbucks, like a plebeian, just to upload the shit. Well, damn. well if least... it's any consolation up here in North Carolina, in the eastern part of the state, we have some cities underwater. Ew. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look. Then again, I did get to try a chili mocha frappuccino, and that was pretty good. A chili? Yeah, chili. A chili pepper? You know, like chili powder. Yeah, as long as it's not a pumpkin spice frappuccino. Dude, that, I was so happy. They actually had a new item for the season that wasn't some fucking pumpkin shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thankfully, internet's back to normal, so maybe it won't be like a freaking mission and a half to get this podcast up on the YouTubes. God willing. God willing. Oh, right. I, formalities, I forgot. So, how have you gentlemen been? Tired as hell. Um, whatever. So I've heard. Poor, yeah. Hashtag pray for Alex. Yes. Pray till I get some sleep tonight. Well, see, this is what happens when you stay up all the time watching wrestling. Hey, I have insomnia, okay? I can't help it. Oh, I have a, I have a periphery song that keeps me from sleeping. <laughs> not funny. Oh, Alex, what will you learn? I'm never funny. Well, yep, that's true. And yet, for some reason, you still choose to be on this podcast. <sighs> it's my form of... See, I'm tired. I can't even form a, a coherent thought. That sounds like a personal problem, buddy. <laughs> Fuck you. It's there. Well, with the formalities out of the way... Guess what? There are corrections. Corrections are back this week because I screwed up information. Well done. Oh. Again. Oh, shut up, Alex. Bravo, motherfucker. <laughs> shut up. Anyway. Not so funny what happens to you, is it? It's only funny when it happens to other people, okay? That's why, that's why we find it funny. <sighs> Fine. Shot of Freud. Whatever. Karma or some shit. Anyway. So, on to the corrections. Apparently, the producer that helped out with that Andrew W.K. track, Party Till We Die, actually was Timmy Trumpet and not Timmy Turner. Apparently, that was just a typo on the part of the article that I was reading off of. Yeah, they, they, they get the name right in the title, but not in the body of the article. How that makes sense is beyond me. But then again, I'm the one that fell for it, so... You gotta get those clicks. I, I suppose so. And for the time being, I suppose Timmy Turner will just be another terrible designer song. Ew. <laughs> and the other correction, apparently Cone, the bass player from Sub 41, not to be confused with the talking bear from Bleach, is apparently still with the band for all these years. Holy shit, doesn't this guy have anything better to do with this time? He's a bass player, of course not. I, yeah, but like, even for a bass player, you're like, you gotta figure it uh, okay, he has to do it up at one point. You know, I could be doing anything else with my time. Maybe I could start my own musical project, and yet he here I am begging for a band that nobody gives a shit about anymore. Such is life. Yes, such is life indeed. indeed. And as we all know, life can be hysterical at times. 
Watch the bitch when you... Uh, um, yes, yes it can. It can be hysterical, it can be frustrating, it can be hysterically frustrating. See the last presidential debate for proof of that. <laughs> nope, 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 no. Not, oh. not this week. Ken Bone is our national savior. That's just me, though, obviously. Moving on. Yes, yes. Anyway, so with all that out of the way, now, of course, is the part where we start talking about the new music releases from the past week or so. And it's not a terribly long list. Obviously, it's been, like, you know, five days between, like, the last podcast recording. But there was some releases of note, including a particularly big one, something that I might actually chart on Billboard charts, but we'll get to that in due time. And remember to check the description below for a playlist of all the songs that we're discussing this week, or at least most of the ones that you can find on YouTube, because, you know, they don't always find their way onto the YouTubes. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Start off with the new music, Dawn, formerly Dawn Richard, one of the key members of Danity Kane before striking it out on her own as an experimental R&B artist, has released a track titled Renegades, which is from the upcoming third part of her heart album trilogy titled redemption heart due out november 18th and when i was listening to this song i was like you know i could kind of groove with this even though given how experimental and out there some of dawn's music can be if you want a recent example she actually had a song on this year's singles program uh renegades is kind of basic all things considered like it's the kind of edm banger that would probably be like a top 10 hit in like 2012 2013 whenever edm started becoming like the big trend with pop music you know yeah. what i mean back when skrillex was building his name and then sort of fell away well, i mean he, he yeah. still produces stuff like he had that like skrillex diplo collaboration and i think he produced a couple guys for justin bieber yeah. or maybe i'm thinking of diplo well it's both it's both they did both because apparently, because apparently to get to get to get some hits, you gotta get that get any motherfucker on the mic. He was never the same after yeah. the Bangarang EP. Yeah. Anyway, back on Richard. Uh, Mark, did you have anything you want to say about uh, it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To be short, yeah, um, yeah. This is a, yeah, this is a solid track. This is a solid track. Um, like, I mean, like out of all the stuff I heard from John Richard and. And really much like I heard two of those one tracks from her like two years ago. But yeah, it's a pretty solid track. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice. I like the like the like the look on it. Yeah, pretty good. Yep, pretty solid track. My favorite little touch though with the beat, even if I did say like it was a little basic, there's one touch I like with like the um loud low brass parts. You know, because I myself was once a low brass instrumentalist, so. That's hitting my soft spot. Hmm. And I'm completely neutral on this. I have no opinion whatsoever. Ah. Of course he does not. Yeah, I, I never followed Danity King anyway, so, you know, whatever. Hmm. You'd be wild, Fair but enough. You, you know, but this shit's good. So yeah, uh, you can look forward to Don Richards' album Redemption Heart out November 18th. Up next, maybe this will provoke a response out of Alex. Maybe not. When I was a wee boy in the early years of high school... Around the time my metal taste was starting to develop, one of the first bands I developed an obsession with were the Swedish melodic death metal Star Wars Dark Tranquility. One of those bands that's ostensibly sort of the old reliable of their genre. They don't really mix up their sound all that much from album to album, but they don't really need to. They put out, you know, solid albums no matter what. In fact, they're coming out with a new one on November 11th, and they dropped the title track from that album titled Atoma. And if you ever listen to any Dark Tranquility, it's about what you expect. There's, you know, dark haunting keyboard and guitar melodies. There's those vocals that are very, you know, there's some clean singing, but for the most part, the vocals are still, like, raspy as hell. And there's this, just in general, this darkly beautiful melody to, like, the whole thing, you know? I mean, that is why they call it melodic death metal. Wouldn't be that without melody, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it could be just because I'm incredibly tired this week and can't focus to save my life, but the song didn't do a whole lot for me. It just sort of sits in the category of, okay, this is a thing. It sounds all right. Yeah, that kind of seems to be, like, a thing with like, Dark Tranquility. Like, either they provoke a hugely positive reaction out of people, or just, like, no reaction at all. 
Yeah, I did uh, find a takeaway with their vocalist. Uh, to me, he kind of sounded like a blend of uh, Ivan from Five Figure Death Punch and early Spencer from Periphery with you know, the clean and the harsh vocals blending together. Oh, why did you have to bring up Five Finger Death Punch? Because that's what came to my mind. What did Dirt Train Quality ever you do to you to deserve that comparison? I heard the voice in my head, okay? <sighs> you certainly heard a voice in your head, all right? I hear several voices in my head. And a ringing in my ears. Same. Most of those voices are just telling me to get Taco Bell all the time, though. That's a lot of voices in my head. Even some, even some of the female voices. Oh, well, okay then. But yeah, you know, me, Dark Tranquility fanboy, I, you know, found myself thoroughly enjoying the song, and I'm probably going to check out Adamo when it drops. Remember, drops November 11th. And up next, Woo-hoo. we have another single from No Worries, that being the collaborative project of Anderson Pack and Hip Hop Producer Knowledge titled Get Bigger slash Do You Love from their upcoming album Yes Loud out on October 21st. I believe it was Mark who, you know, brought this to my attention, so I'll let you start. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, so, so yeah, right the one with, 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 with the song brought here, like, 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 Pat Barrett's about, I don't know how, you know, Get Bigger, he wants to, you, he, 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 he wants to give a hand to start, you know, with the music and all that, because he brought about how, how, how the like household he, household he, I mean, you can, he, he, he has to, you know, he may have to, you know, dad in jail, have to work at the stores, and work at the stores, and work at work at his job, he could sit me and, and figure, I want to get big, but I don't want to keep doing this dead end job, and I'd rather be dead and do this shit. And then, and, he, and, and just move his own. And then second verse is like, you know, with him and his girl, his ex girl is like, well, you don't know, listen to my music. Well, I mean, look, I want them to listen to my music. You want know, to do my music and fucking with you. Like, I like the way he rocks about it and the way he sounds. He sounds, you know, you know more, um, like, he, he sounds more, what's all looking for? A way that's not, a way that's not douchey, but more, you know, sim- you know, like, emp- sympathetic, like, empathetic, like, sincere? Like, yeah, sincere, yeah, sincere. You feel, you feel him like, 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 like you have somebody that wants to be that wants to uh, want to become more what you are. That one day you want to become that you want to become that you want to become that be you know you know be, be known for your you know for your talent for your art. And the song and the beat and the beat nice and the beat got nice from knowledge. And what did I know if knowledge did some hook on here? I didn't know that. I looked to, to look it up on Genius and I was like, oh, he did that part. I didn't know it was that. Yeah, but yeah, we got yeah. It's a good track from Master Pack, and he still continues to make good music. I looking forward to this album more and more. I keep looking to it. I don't really have much to add with Mark's statement. I'm more or less in, you know, pretty good song, and yeah, I'm definitely glad to check out the album when it comes out. Next, up next, you know, it kind of sucks that this band is going to end up going away after this next album because I remember. When this music new review and news website that I used to go to, I believe it was called The New Review, they reviewed all kinds of, like, you know, metal releases that were, you know, varied from, like, you know, mainstream, contemporary, to, like, underground. And this was one of the more underground bands I remember them reviewing once. The band Ghost Cube, who are, like, for the who never listened to them, generally they're a mixture of, like, hardcore punk, sludge metal, and shoegaze. And I know that sounds real, kind of cringe-inducing, but they actually make this shit work fantastically well. If you've never heard their 20th release in Tides and Drifts, you need to. It is fantastic. However, in the five years between that and their upcoming October 21st release, Shadow Swallow the Flood, they've been, you know, relatively silent. They've mostly been getting themselves involved in a bunch of other projects. Perhaps most notably, guitarist and vocalist Dave Opachowski has started fronting a new band called Publicist UK. And so, with all that happening, it's no surprise this new album is their last one. And I kind of get that vibe of like, yeah, we know this is probably going to be over for a long-ass time with this new single that they released called Harbingers, which it flows about how you would expect if you know their sound. Like, it starts off with these, it starts off with this kind of silent, like, guitar, like, 
melody thing going on. Then it segues into this more, like, sl these sludgier, like, heavier segments. And then, you know, veers back into, like, this more shoegazy part before, you know, going back into sort of the heavy shit for the end. And the way the mood flows, it feels consistently, you know, sort of, like, melancholic. Like, again, like, they're clearly acknowledging, yes, this is the end. At least for now, anyway. Yeah. It looks like we share the uh, same kind of idea with what the music sounds like. I have here in my notes, blend of groove metal and shoegaze. And yeah, it works. I found myself getting into it, so I'll definitely check yeah, that out Yeah, I, I figured Alex would have liked it, because as you made it clear earlier, you kind of like your metal with like a bit of depressive sadness. Yeah, like um, Porcupine Tree. Pretty much. So, yeah. Great song, and just the greatness of it makes me really sad that Shadow Swallowed the Flood, again, out on October 21st, is going to be their last album. Eh, they were so young. <sighs> I was a good die young, especially in this goddamn year. <sighs> yeah, ha have we mentioned 2016 well, sucks? Because it really does. Yes, yes it does. And anyway, we got two more songs here. First up, Alicia Keys, someone who, admittingly, I'm only vaguely familiar with. Like, I know she's had, like, you know, big success in the past, but, like, past few years or so, she's kind of, like, I don't even really, really know where she sits fame-wise. Like, it kind of feels like she's always kind of been there, but at the same time, she hasn't been, like, you know, billboard chart, you know, chart top success or anything. She's got a new album coming out November 4th called Here, and she dropped a single from it called Blended Family, featuring, you know, guest verse from rapper ASAP Rocky. And as the name implies, the song is ostensibly about, well, like, it starts off from her perspective, like, she becomes a stepmom to a kid, and she's kind of singing the song to the kid, like, she's trying to reassure them that even though she's, like, new to the family, things are gonna be, like, okay in the end. And, you know, it kind of continues on the same track for the second verse. Then ASAP Rocky, his verse kicks in, which, ugh, it kind of sounds like it's trying to connect to the idea of, like, you know, mixed up, non-traditional families, but, I don't know, it just kind of seems like he's off in his own little world. There's even a point where he says the lines, to the stepbrothers and the stepsisters, and to the godsisters who let us slept with them. Yeah, the, in the in the words of Archer, phrasing. Ugh. And I mean, the music is okay. Is is this isn't really my thing, but like, it's good for what it is. If like, I can't think of a better way you would write this kind of really like emotionally manipulative, sappy, sacky, sentimental crap. What the f sentimental crap. Where the fuck did I stutter on that? Okay. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I mean, 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 it's a solid song, like, so it's all like, like, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like, like, it's like, so full, it's, it's, it's very so full, it's very melodic. I will say, like, she, 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 yeah, that was a bit off for me. I mean, I don't mind him saying Rocky sometimes, but his verse is kind of, kind of feel disjointed. Like, 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 like he tried. He tried, he didn't suck, but he, what is that? I'm going to say again. Yeah. And that's pretty much the long and short of it. Yep. Yeah. And last but not least, no doubt the biggest song that released within the past few days. Guess who's back? Well, I mean, not technically back. The, he technically never really went away. But, you know, his last album was four years ago, even if it doesn't feel like it. So, once again here to bestow us with his own special blend of ripping off 80s music trends, Bruno Ball! He <laughs> announced that, like, he announced uh. the title track from his new upcoming album coming out on November 18th, titled 24K Magic. And, you know, even though I said that kind of snarkily, I do like these Bruno Mars songs that deliberately rip 80s music trends, because, you know, let's be honest, in a year like 2016, where 
as I believe I've mentioned before, all the big, like, top ten hits feel like, like you know, just empty, half-baked templates for pop songs. You know, Sorry, Pillow Talk, Panda. Ugh. It's good to have, like, an actual pop artist who writes, you know, actual, complete, catchy pop music with, like, a pulse and some personality, you know? Mm-hmm. Treasure's great. I will stand by that song. Yes, <laughs> Same here, man. Yeah, 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 y
He's apparently doing shit for Kit Kat. He recently wrote a variation of the a surprisingly soulful variation of like the Kit Kat jingle. And he's even appeared in a commercial for it, where it's like, you know, him in a giant bear costume in, like, you know, a store, and then he picked a Kit Kat with, like, his face on it. Like, Chance the Rapper. Eh? Eh? Uh, and, you oh know, the, ra- the the Chance on the Rapper starts, you know, singing to him, because what else is going to happen in a commercial, you dingbats? Uh, you know... I'm I'm not shy about it. I'm a husky American. I like my candy bars every now and then. I like Kit Kat bars, but I hate all these Kit Kat commercials. They make me not want to buy your product, Kit Kat, and I don't want that to happen. I love your product. You make a good product. Just please stop with these stupid jingle cover commercials. I agree. As far as I'm concerned, there is only one acceptable kind of Kit Kat commercial. And though, and those commercials are the ones that chew out people who do not eat Kit Kats properly. I'm looking at you, khaki blue socks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't make me get into it. Yeah. For those unaware, you don't bite into a Kit Kat whole. You eat it piece by individual piece. Eat it like you're a human being with some self-respect and dignity. Like, I'm neither of those things, and even I understand that much about eating Kit Kats. See? Robert gets it. And if I can get it, so can you. Yeah, that's a thing worth noting, and that you've probably seen on your TV screens when you're channel surfing. Fun. Up next, Anthrax and Slayer. They've been touring over the past month or so. I know, because they stopped in Miami like a week or two ago, and all my friends went. And I couldn't, because I didn't have money. A tear is falling from my face for you. Shut up, it's not like you're going to see either of them either anytime soon. That's a discussion for another day. Yes. Uh, Recently, they actually made a stopover in good old Atlanta, Georgia. Home of Coca-Cola and Adult Swim. And during Anthrax's performance, they were joined on stage by a, well, depending on how you look at it, either surprise or obvious guest. In this case, actor Norman Reedus, mainstay of AMC's The Walking Dead, and the upcoming Hideo Kojima project Death Stranding. He jo- He was, you know, backstage, you know, hanging out with the guys, and he was even given a brief, you know, window of opportunity to join Anthrax on stage, playing a bit of bass during a portion of the Anthrax classic Indians. <laughs> See, Alex gets it. Yeah, I get it. Seriously, Indians is such a great song. Yeah. And so much fun live, trust me. I, I've seen Anthrax live before, and that was like their opening song. Yeah. What a wicked combination. Norman Reedus and Anthrax. We are talking about the same man who once got a Lemmy tattoo matching with one of the dudes from Mastodon. Yeah. Oh, oh and... So um, he is like... I am, I am going to steal this joke from a Facebook comment I saw for that video... It looks like Daryl is among the living. Oh! oh! <laughs> yeah. I shamelessly stole that from someone on Facebook, and I will not credit you because I have no idea who you are. You have no idea what this is anyway, so it's all good. You never know. Maybe the maybe like the 20 people, among the 20 people listening to us, you could be there. Just saying. Well, behind you. Ha! Not falling for that one this time. I got a mirror here right now. There is no one behind me. Look to your left. I have a mirror there, too. It's like an entire, like, this entire corner off to the sides are all mirror. So you can look at yourself and gaze into your, uh, what's the opposite of sexy mug? Fuck you. (laughs) Another win for me. But, yeah, at the end of the day, it must be really fun to be normous. He gets to play with Anthrax and be best friends with Hideo Kojima. That is the life of Riley. Yep. And now, moving on to news involving metal stars trying to be film directors. Because that worked so well the first (laughs) time, didn't it, Rob Zombie? Uh, I would say something on that, but miraculously, I've avoided his filmography up to now. And sometimes I get the sense I should keep it that way. Anyway, the first trailer for an upcoming film called Officer Down, spelled with an E at the end, 
Eh, eh, get it? Eh. Uh, recently surfaced on the internet. And this is the directorial debut of Sean Brahan, a.k.a. Clown from Slipknot. He's called that because he wears a clown mask. Really? You know, I just realized, what if that weird clown epidemic is just a bunch of Slipknot fanboys? No, 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 no. They're better off being ICP fans. Nah, ICP fans aren't menacing enough. They wish they were as menacing as the scary forest clowns. Okay, touche. But, yeah, this trailer for this movie, which is apparently based off a graphic novel I've never read, but I'm told the writers of it apparently worked on some uncanny X-Men titles. Yeah, I watched this trailer a couple times, and, um, eh, it looks okay. I mean, the movie's only really hitting, like, you know, on demand and, like, you know, streaming services, so you can't really expect too much. But, uh, you know, it just looks like... Okay, uh, you ever see that movie Hobo with a Shotgun? Uh, no. First off, any of you who haven't seen it, you should. It's a really goddamn fun movie. Second, it it just kind of looks like that, but, like, starring a police officer. The basic gist of it is, like, you know, this officer, he's going around, you know, stopping, trying to stop crime in this very corrupted town with, like, killer nuns and shit. As well as other weird, out there, you know, gang threats. He obviously gets gunned down in the line of duty, hence that pun. And then, you know, he gets resurrected back to life, where he starts taking out, you know, his bloody vengeance, or something like that. It, you know, now I think about it, I feel like I'm describing the plot of at least 20 other movies that exist out there. Robocop, Time Cop, Six Million Dollar Man. Oh, but with a shotgun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, you know... A little bee, a little fun B movie, probably worth renting. Yeah, I mean, if it is on the you know services, I won't have to pay like too much out the pocket to watch it if I so choose to. But you know, who knows? Maybe directing movies will work out better for Clown. It, let let me put it like this: at the very least, unlike Rob Zombie, from what I've heard, it doesn't look like he's reaching further than his grasp is capable of. I mean, this isn't like you know remaking fucking Halloween. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I refuse to see that movie on principle. I, I just do. Along with other things. He was an abused as a child. That's why he's a serial killer. And now this story is so much more interesting because of it. It isn't. How trite. Uh, so, you know, you might want to keep an eye out for that. Movie's coming out November 18th. Yeah, November eighteenth. So, That's going to be a really busy day for a lot of people, yourself included, Alex. Yeah, I know. Pokemon's coming out that day. Oh shit! Seriously, I thought it was going to be out the week after. No, it's not coming out Black Friday. That's crazy talk. Is it though? Is it? Yes, it is. Eh, if you say so. Anyway, speaking of crazy talk, we have to move on to infer- to news stories about lawsuits. I feel like we've been talking about that a lot these past few weeks. People want money. Really yeah. Anyway, this time, one of the lawsuits in question involves good old Dr. Dre, who's apparently threatening legal action against the... Actually, it's against Sony, though I think more specifically Lifetime, because of an upcoming movie they're airing called that's a biopic for singer Michelle. The reason for the lawsuit being that, apparently, the biopic does in fact pay quite a bit of attention to the abusive relationship between her and good old Dre. Something well, that was apparently skimped over in Straight Outta Compton, I believe. Well, you know how Lifetime works. Their motto is, men are terrible and will hurt you because this is Lifetime. Some things Family Guy just gets absolutely right. <laughs> oh god, those movies suck. Yeah, it looks like Straight Outta Compton did skip a lot of things this included. Oh, I'm gonna say, it's a Lifetime movie. I don't think it'd be so yeah, so they got the whole yeah that shit that Alex just mentioned, but yeah, it seems like every time that there's somebody trying to come in, would it be uh, really behind the scenes for the aftermath? There's some bad news, bad news seems to happen. Like, uh, like for real, I, 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 I feel like I know like like when they're filming it, people got hurt, shot, killed. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know there's a trial going on with that. I think that ended, and now. In, in your in your earlier when it got released, you know, about your, 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 about your
give the give away. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was part of the whole. They didn't put, they didn't put him, him abusing her. That he apologized, but she ain't having that shit. So he thought, you know what? I'm gonna put my story out there. And no, we no one's better than lifetime. Well, I'm so yeah. glad that they wasted so little time to get this out by waiting just about a year after Straight Outta Compton was put out on the into <coughs> into theaters. Yeah, but you know, I. I'm sorry, but I can't feel bad for Drake, because, you know, if he did abuse a woman, that makes him an asshole. And not even, like, you know, a rapper cool asshole. Just a straight-up asshole. Yeah. But we can take solace that because it's a Lifetime movie, it's going to be pretty crappy. And I have two examples to prove my point. The unauthorized Saved by the Bell story, and Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever. Oh, I got another one. That other yes. movie they did. Yes, 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 yes. You don't touch Aaliyah, you asshole! Oh my god, I I yeah. I really forgot about that movie like last week, and then you guys brought it up. Now it's it's all flooding back into my brain now. Fuck you, Lifetime. I kn- I know, right? Grumpy Cat's movie was terrible. No, I meant the Ilya one. That was a joke. They fuck the the big. They all fucking missing and Timberland. Not for missing. Well, they they really did some bad casting here. Like, really. They suck. Ryan. Yeah, the moral of the story is fuck you, Lifetime. <laughs> You're Although movies. Dre ain't exactly a saint in this either. No, but. You know how it goes. Yes, yes I suppose it does. Yeah. Another lawsuit, by the way. So, you know, segue. And this one, the sewer is probably actually in the right. This one concerns music legend Tom Waits. Apparently, he appears to be taking legal action against a French circus star by the name of Bartabas. Not to be confused with the mech from Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. That's called Barbatos, you plebeian. Hey, I'm sorry. The first time I've read it, I... My mind just... I don't. I can't look at a spelling like that and not think of oh, uh, that that robot that the, the apathetic kid pilots, you know. Hey, I'm supposed to be the dyslexic one here. This isn't about dyslexia. This is about purposefully terrible puns masquerading as humor. You need to work on your pun game, boy. Dude, I know. Like, it's not terrible enough. Anyway, Tom Waits is suing Bartabas on the grounds that a recent opera production of theirs titled. I'm not going to say the French title, but the English title roughly translates to They Shoot Angels, Don't They? Features a whopping total of 16 songs by the iconic singer-songwriter himself. And evidently, he apparently never gave permission to Bartabas to use the music in this manner, so he's of course taken their ass to court. What do I keep saying, people? Get permission! This isn't rocket science, man! Ugh. Regular science. Maybe it is. Okay. So yeah, I, I I can't really add too much because rarely this is actually a situation where the artist is in the right. This isn't even like ambiguous or anything. Like you took more than a dozen songs from this guy. I don't, like okay, uh, let me actually say something here. Bartabas claims that they had actually paid Waits for permission to use the music. Although, evidently, his agent never actually got back to Bartabas about it. So, again, sketchy and up in the air. But unless Tom Waits explicitly said yes to do so, or a representative explicitly said yes, don't use the goddamn music. You can't exactly claim fair use here, you know? Yep, when you're using it for commercial purposes, you gots to pay up. Straight up, man. That, that's just how it works in this world. Most, most yeah. This isn't like radio where you can just play without paying the artist. <laughs> eh. Life's terrible. And speaking of things that are terrible, our last story for this week, maybe some of you have seen this video going around. This video of a woman who, let's just say she makes Helen Lovejoy look rational. Now, what may I be talking about for those of you in the blue? Well, a video that's apparently been like 
a couple of soul, but is only recently gaining traction. Video came out of a woman, I believe a Christian woman, angrily and sadly reciting the lyrics to the song North North by rapper Vince Staples, and, you know, just complaining about the vulgarity and offensiveness of the lyrical content. Oh, where, where, fucking where? And, yeah, that that was pretty much my response when the news broke, and it's even my response now, considering, surprisingly, Vince actually chose to respond to this, and even more surprisingly, his response was really tame. Like, you know, for a guy who's, like, in his young 20s, you know, hot young rapper, his response was essentially, you know, this woman, she's very clearly distressed, she has a right to her opinion, you know, America... It's a free country, freedom of speech. People can say what they want about me. Which, again, for someone like Vince, that's a surprisingly mature and level-headed response. And that's something I'm inclined to agree with. However, freedom of speech means that even though she's allowed to say whatever she wants, I'm allowed to say whatever I want in return. And I'm sure Alex does. Alex was allowed to as well, like he just did. Oh, yeah. May I, Rob? I just want to get one comment out of the way first. There's a point in the video where she's reciting the chorus, and the main line of the chorus is, I ain't never run from nothing but the police. And she's like, oh, sure, we're we're just going to teach our kids to run away from police officers? Yeah, like, that's good life advice. Which my response is, yes! Have you not seen the the news in the past couple of years, lady? Running away from the police is actually the most sensible thing that most human beings could do. Because they haven't been giving us a lot of reason to trust them. And specifically, and and, and, and you know, you know how I hear about all these black police against the brother being, being gunned down by the police? That's the reason why we want for them. Yeah, and maybe. That's a fucking scary. Exactly. Okay, Alex? Yeah. You may proceed. Yeah. I'm sure this woman is a wholesome individual, but my god, people like this drive me up a fucking wall. Oh, I'm so offended by this. I'm going to angrily and tearfully recite every word and say how offended I am about this. Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares if you're offended by a fucking rap song. Nobody cares that you're oh so angry and sad over a goddamn rap song, lady. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to know. Nobody has to. to uh, that's how angry people make me. The, the, Just the the, the th- another thing. Another the only other thing I want to say is like, okay, you're getting mad at Vince Staples, like. I, North North is kind of, t- like, that, going back to the, I never run from nothing but the police, that line is pretty tame by comparison. Like, could you imagine if someone put on Close Your Eyes and Count the Fuck by Run the Jewels? Like, I could just imagine this lady having a heart attack on the spot. The second killer Mike goes, when you niggas go you not and kill the police motherfuckers. Or even worse, if someone put on Angel Duster a Run the Jewels song that explicitly criticizes organized religion, I'm pretty sure this woman would go insane. You know, yeah. like she just stared into the void like some freaking Lovecraftian horror shit. She's staring into the abyss of the event horizon. Do pretty you much. Say? You know, you said you were tired earlier, but now you seem like you're quite full of energy. Yeah, that's what these things do to me. The professionally offended get me really riled up. <sighs> Yeah, 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 man. This is a, this 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 is not a case of man. This is stupid. I mean, I mean, I respect Vince for being a mature one in this. That she should, as you know, you know, like that's good on him. That's good on him. But this lady, goddamn it, you just sound so fucking stupid. <sighs> okay, I think we're all done here. Yeah, we got all the anger out. Yeah, yeah we're good. at the end of the news. And now we can segue into the last right. thing we need to do for this podcast, which is the new album releases for October 14th, 2016. Perhaps of most importance to myself personally, the newest album and last album from the Dillinger Escape Plan titled Dissociation. 
I need me some mathy goodness, and you know, it's probably going to be the first album I buy with my paycheck. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Yeah, that, 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 what, what Alex just said. Yeah. So, there's that. Uh, from Southern Fried Metal Band Red Fang, their newest release, Only Ghosts. Uh, from Norwegian black metal outfit Dark Throne, who I believe we talked about earlier. Remember the guy who said, please don't vote for me, and he had a picture of his cat? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. So, yeah, his band, new album coming out titled Arctic Thunder. Not to be confused with Tropic Thunder. <sighs> Good uh, from S- from Singaporean grindcore band Wormrot, their newest release, Voices. There's the newest release from Chicago thrash outfit Oozing Wound, titled Whatever Forever. And the self-titled debut album from the Screamo Violence Act, Weak Wrists. Uh, and the only other two notable albums that weren't metal albums that are coming out this week... Uh, the newest Kings of Leon album, Walls, and, surprisingly, a new r- album from rapper The Game, titled 1992. Oh, yeah, every, oh, yeah, that was this morning when you, this is a Meek Mill line. <laughs> uh, yeah, Meek Mill, you, Meek Mill, you take the most major L's. Take a boo, break. son. That's just sad. Yeah. So, that covers just about everything for this week. Now we'll leave you with where you can find us out there in the magical wonderland that is the internet. So, Alex, where can they find you? Or of Azure on Twitter, where you can find me talking about, well, whatever the hell I feel like talking about. And that's pretty much the only place I'm frequently online, so there you go. Damn right. Mark, where can they find you? You can find me at mac 2 Media on Twitter and on my own site, the Mount Hyder one. I talk about everything, anime, music, movies. Did you One Punch Man earlier this week? Check that shit out. Will do. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Rob Barracuda. You can also find me on Ask Fem and Instagram at Rob Barracuda, as well as on YouTube, which is probably which is where you always find new episodes of the podcast as soon as they go up. Just remember to hit subscribe and, you know, hit the notifications thing if you want to know immediately, immediately. Because, again, YouTube's notification system is weird now, apparently. Yeah. Also, as I mentioned, this is the official music podcast of Surreal Resolution, and you can find that website at www.surrealresolution.com. You can also find the podcast on its own subdomain at decibelboost.com that's the real resolution.com. So keep both of those bookmarks so you can not only check up on the podcast, but also the gaming podcast, as well as articles pertaining to music, film, anime, gaming, whatever your heart desires, we do it. Also, we have a Discord chat for the website, so if you ever want to, you know, hit up, you know, me and Alex and, you know, talk music, you can get to there directly from the site. I seem to have problems linking it, like, in the description for some reason. But Y'all can figure it out. Y'all are smart people. Hopefully. You're got- well, they're smarter than me, at least. That's not a hard feat. Yeah. <laughs> Singer. And, of course, as always, shout out to the producer, Mr. E, for graciously letting me use his music for this podcast. And I believe that will do it for this week. So, until next time, peace out. See ya. I'm on the bed. Latest.